Hey guys, have you ever read the classic book which won many literature awards and a major graphic design award and sold almost 50 million copies worldwide? Which book are you asking? Well, it's The Very Hungry Caterpillar. If you don't know the book, that's all right. I'll give you a quick summary. As the title suggests, it's about a very hungry caterpillar. It spent every day of a week eating more and more food with each passing day. It started with one apple, then two pears. Until at the end, he ate food like a slice of cake, a lollipop, a sausage, and the list goes on. After all that food, he felt sick to the stomach. But the next day, he ate a huge green leaf and felt much better. He spun himself into a cocoon, and after two weeks, he transformed into something totally different. He was reborn into a beautiful butterfly. So today we're looking at the encounter between Jesus and Nicodemus. And we're going to be looking at the idea of being born again, just like that caterpillar being born into a butterfly. But before we start, let's recall from last week the reason John the disciple wrote this gospel. So if we look near the end of the book, in chapter 20, verse 30 to 31, it says, Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and by believing you may have life in his name. So if this incident with Nicodemus was included for this reason, so you may believe Jesus is the Messiah and have eternal life. To start off, we should find out who Nicodemus is. In verse 1, it states that Nicodemus is a Pharisee. A Pharisee is a teacher of the law, someone who knows the Bible very well and teaches it to others. Kind of like in our church, we have Matt, Graham and Rick. They are the ministers in our church who have studied God, uh, God's word in the Bible and teach it to others. And on top of being a Pharisee, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews, someone with high social standing during that time. So Nicodemus approaches Jesus, but he does so during the middle of the night. We don't know the reason for coming at this particular time, but some possible reasons could be he wanted to avoid the crowds that gathered around Jesus during the day. It may be he was timid and didn't want to be seen with this radical teacher. Or maybe he didn't want to be seen by the other Pharisees of him approaching Jesus as they start to have a disliking of him. But either way, we should have a look at the reason why Nicodemus approached Jesus. In verse 2, Nicodemus says, Rabbi which means teacher. Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one could perform these signs you do unless God were with him. So Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a teacher of God's word, and someone who is highly feudal regards Jesus as a teacher. It's almost like the master of a master in the Kung Fu master movie where the Grand Master has even more knowledge and understanding than the First Master we learn about. So Nicodemus is here to seek wisdom from Jesus. But before he asks any questions, Jesus makes a statement which is also the main point that we are looking at today. Unless someone is born again, he cannot see the Kingdom of God. And then later on in verse 5, he further says, to enter the kingdom of God, you need to be born again. So what does it mean that we need to be reborn or born again? Well, if it's confusing for you, you're not alone. Nicodemus didn't understand either. He asked, but how can anyone be born when he is old? Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? We're going to look a bit later about what Jesus means by being born again. But first, there might be another reason that it may be confusing for Nicodemus regarding the need to be born again. As a Jew, he would have believed that they are God's people. 
and being God's people, they were already part of God's kingdom. Their status, their birth, being a descendant of Abraham, who God made his first covenant, his pro- first promises with his people. These things were what set them apart as God's people in the first place. He was in God's kingdom, wasn't he? So it might be a shock or surprise that something else needs to happen for them to enter the kingdom of God. So have you believed that you would go to heaven because of simply who you are? Were you brought up in a Christian family? And that's what will allow you to enter heaven. Maybe it's because you're part of the church. You and you attend Infinity Youth on Friday, and maybe you even attend service on Sunday. You are here with God's people, God's family. Maybe that's enough to enter heaven, the kingdom of God. Well, Nicodemus and many of the Jews would be thinking the same thing. And Jesus' answer is no. To enter the kingdom of God, you need to be born again. So what is this rebirth? Well, to start off, it's not a physical rebirth. In some religions, there's the idea of reincarnation. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. So Nicodemus might be thinking something similar, physical rebirth, but he asks, Can he enter his mother's womb a second time and be born? Jesus clarifies clarifies it as born of water and spirit. It is a spiritual rebirth. So how does this spiritual rebirth come about? It is from the work of the Holy Spirit and only possible through the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus says, whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. And whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. But let's think about the physical birth of the flesh that we know so well. During birth, as babies, there is nothing that they can do to change their outcome. They have no control over their birth. It's usually dependent on the mother and the people around her, usually a medical team. It's the same with the birth given by the spirit. There is nothing that we can do that affects our spiritual birth. We can't make ourselves be born again. We can't even influence the Holy Spirit. The Spirit, even those who have been born again, is like the wind. Jesus says, the wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where where it comes from or where it's going. And that's the same with the Holy Spirit. So have you allowed the Holy Spirit to work in you? Or have you been trying to work your way into heaven with your actions? Maybe you haven't been doing anything wrong or bad recently. You haven't murdered, you haven't stolen, and maybe you haven't even lied. At least not that often. Maybe you have been doing some good deeds. Maybe you helped someone in need, lent some money to a friend, helped carry someone's heavy bag. But what does Jesus say? No one can enter the kingdom of heaven unless they are born of water and spirit. Nothing we do or not do can make us go into heaven. As Paul said in Romans, there is no one righteous, not even one. But Nicodemus has one more question. And you might be thinking the same thing. How can these things be? How can Jesus know these things, and how does it work? Imagine in the past, there was a new undiscovered island. No one has ever stepped foot onto it. And before technology, how can you find out anything about it? Whatever anyone says, how can the information be true? They haven't been there, nor seen any part of it themselves. But what if a native of the island came to you? They will be the only person that you can trust regarding information about the island. No one else. Jesus is the only one that has seen the kingdom of heaven. Actually, he is like the native 
He not only has seen it, but lives there. He knows the kingdom better than anyone else. He is the only one that knows the kingdom firsthand. He says, If I have told you about things that happen on earth and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you about things of heaven? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. So it is not surprising that it is only through Jesus that we find out that we need to be born again. But Jesus is not only acting as a messenger, but he is the only way to have eternal life. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. So you might be thinking, if having eternal life is by believing in Jesus, why do we need to be born again by the Spirit? They seem like two different things, but they actually come hand in hand. It is only through the Holy Spirit working in you that you can come to believe in Jesus to have eternal life and enter the kingdom of heaven. It is together with the Spirit and the Son, Jesus, that you will be born again. Like the very hungry caterpillar, your old self will be gone and instead be transformed into a new life that is seen as sinless and righteous before God. So have you been born again? Or are you trusting in your status, in your family, Christian school, your youth group? Or are you still trying to work your way into God's heaven with your actions, thinking that you can prove that you can be good enough for it? Remember, unless someone is born again, he cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for the book of John to show us who Jesus is, that he is the Messiah, and that through him we may have eternal life. Thank you for this passage with Nicodemus, showing us the need to be born again, to be part of your kingdom. I give thanks for the Holy Spirit in Jesus, as only together can we believe that, believe and be in your kingdom. I pray for those who have not yet been reborn. I pray that the Holy Spirit can work in their hearts so that they may come to know Jesus as their Lord and Saviour and have new life. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.